coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. I said, can you receive it? Can you receive it? Beginning may be wealth. Continuing may be wealth. But when you finish this abundance, because wealth is quantifiable. You say Bill Gates has 55.2, so you can count it till 55.2. Abundance is countless. It is what Pastor Charles and Pastor Ketch will say, Berekete, nyafu, nyafu, all over the place. God wants to take this church and manifest his abundance to you. If you can receive it, shout yes! I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and thank you for tuning in to watch Fresh Dew today. Fresh Dew has a growing circle of partners, and in this time, I want to invite you to be part of our circle of partnership. I'd like to read this portion of scripture. 1 Corinthians 3, from verse 6 to 9 says, I planted, Paul speaking, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are all God's, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, you are God's building. I love the scripture because it shows really for me the circle of partnership and it shows different roles it shows Paul planting Apollos watering but you know many times when we think about partnership we only think of the one who plants and the one who waters well there's a third person in that circle which I want to bring out today a third person and that's God since God brings the increase so think of the circle not just as two sets of people holding hands but there's a third set another person there God and every single one has the role they play. That's basically what Paul was saying. I have my role, you have my role, and God has his role. Now, if we read that from the New Living Translation, it shows this. It says, I planted the seed in your hearts. Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. And that's the beauty of partnership. We all work together with the same purpose of getting the word of God through fresh dew out to everyone. He says, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers and you are God's field, you are God's building. So really between the one planting let's say us on Fresh Dew, and the ones watering, our partners, no one is more important. But the most important person is God. And that's the thing, we must never forget the God factor in any circle of partnership. And on Fresh Dew, we remember the God factor in our circle of partnership. So really, the question is, can increase occur therefore without the God factor? And the answer is no. No matter how hard you work really, or how much you plant, or how much you water, you must remain conscious of the God factor. God is the one that brings the increase. Now, another question is, can God increase us without our playing our roles? Yes, he can, but he won't. Can God increase us without the circle of partnership? Yes, he can, because he's God, but he won't. Why do I say he won't? Because we're no longer a child of God. In the wilderness mode, in the mode where manna just drops and quail drops in our laps from heaven. No. You know, when the, when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan, the Bible says in Joshua 5.12 that the manna ceased. 5.12, I believe. The manna ended. That was it. Why did the manna cease? The manna that was dropping from heaven free of charge 
intended because when they crossed the Jordan, they plugged into Genesis 8.22. Seed time and harvest will never cease. And the Bible says as they ate of the produce of their planting and their watering, and of course the God factor came in, God took away the manna. And there was no more free fall of provision from heaven. God can free fall provision, but he set up a cycle. And I like to put it this way. In the circle of partnership on Fresh Dew, we plug into the cycle. The circle plugs into the cycle. And the cycle is seed time and harvest. Where we plant, we come to the set, we teach the word of God, we shoot, and you water with your prayers, with your financial contributions, and we continue to push the gospel on Fresh Dew out to the ends of the earth. Now, how do I become a partner? It's very simple. Just log on to www.freshg.tv and follow the, the signs and log in and begin to, you know, be part of what God is doing in the circle of partnership. You can put your partnership in any currency. You can put in any frequency you want to, but it's just for us to hold hands together, knowing that in that circle, the God factor is the most important and we can't do it without the God factor. You must build momentum capacity. Or let me use the development term. You must capacitize in your momentum. Build the energy. Build the spiritual force. Back to verse 13, the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous for he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Every major level of the breakthrough of God, the prosperity of God will attract Envy. So settle that in your heart. Fifteen. Now the Philistines have stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. And they filled them with earth, sand, sand. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Is that in your Bible? I've been wondering those two words because when I was taught in school, it was mighty, mightier, and mightiest. I was never taught that much mightier was correct English. Maybe it is, but there is a level of the momentum of God in you that produces results that even English grammar will begin to change. Much mightier. Don't second guess me. I'm going somewhere. You've not been there with me. Then Isaac departed from there, pitched his tent in the valley of Gera and dwelt there. Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. He called them the names by which his father had called them. Let me just throw this in for somebody doing business quickly. When something is working, don't change its name. Just give it the same name. The name is working. That's what he did here. 19. Isaac's servants also dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerah quarreled with the herdsmen of Isaac. And they said, the water is ours. So he called the name of the well Isaac because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well and they quarreled with that one also. He called his name Sitna, contention. And he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quarrel with it. So he called its name Rehoboth. Because he said, for now, for now, for now, the Lord has made room for us in the land. And we shall be fruitful. 23. Then he went up from there to Beersheba. The Lord appeared to him and spoke to him. 25. He built an altar. And there his servants dug another well. 26. Abimelech came to him from Gerah with Ahuzath. One of his names, that's like uh, Medulla Oblongata, Ahuzat. One of his friends, and Faikal, the commander of the army. Can you imagine when the military come to you in your house? <laughs> and Isaac said to them, why have you come to me? Since you hate me, and have sent me away from you. 
But they said, no, 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 we have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. Oh, you. And so we said, let there now be an oath between us, between you and us. Let us make a covenant with you that you will do us no harm. Since we have not touched you. Good. Hmm? True. Since we have done nothing to you but good. Lie. And we have sent you away in peace. Lie. You are now the blessed of the Lord. So he made a feast and they ate and he drank. Then they rose early in the morning. And so on oath to one another. And Isaac sent them away and they departed in peace. And it came to pass that same day Isaac's servants came and told him and said, Sir, we have found water. He called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. And then there is a very strange two verses in that chapter. When Esau, not Isaac, Esau. You wonder why he just came in from nowhere. It's not a parenthetical information. There's a reason behind it. Esau was 40 years old. He took as wives Judith and Basimath. We don't practice that anymore. Those of you from the village, we don't practice it anymore. And Judith and Basimath were a grief of mind to Isaac and Rebekah, the parents of Esau. I will leave that to you to find out why that is inside here. Okay, so let's, let's work on this a little bit. The Bible starts in Genesis 26 by saying that there was a famine in the land. Different from the first famine that was in Abraham's days. And everybody logically, intelligently, using sense knowledge, decided to move. You looked at your neighbor's house, there was a for sale sign. The wives were talking to each other, they were selling things, and everybody was going. Because you know, when there is famine, there's going to be hunger, there's going to be the, the possibility of epidemic and theft, and all kinds of things. So it made common sense for everybody to move. Everybody was moving. Isaac was beginning to make some moves to move. <laughs> you like that? Moves to move. And God told him, don't go. Don't go. In the matured life, you must be able to hear God. You are not everybody. So you don't move like everybody does. One of the greatest places in the earth that you will find that is in an airport. Because not everybody in an airport is traveling. Some are going nowhere. Some are just loitering up and down African airports. Some have pens in their pocket. They've angled for you. They know you packed in a hurry. You forgot a pen. You want to fill the form. They tell you 200 naira. Some people are going nowhere. And so if you start chatting with some people who are going nowhere, you can lose your flight. You are not everybody. You are different. You are unique. You are somebody that has been processed by the Holy Spirit. Processed in the apostolic house that God has placed you. Because he has a mandate in mind for you. That your life will be guarded and underguarded and displayed. By the manifestations of the almightiness of God. Irrefutably God. Irrefutably Jesus. Irrefutably Holy Ghost. So God said, Isaac, don't go. Stay here. If you stay here, I will bless you. The question is how? Because to all intents and purposes, famine has dryness. No water. So he left. I'm mean, sorry, he stayed. Everybody else left. And some of you may have been challenged in life to leave. Because people say they are living. And let me tell you, there is one phrase you hear people talk about, and it's a phrase you hear in church. I'm sure you don't hear it here. That's the phrase that says everybody is talking. And that everybody is two people. Everybody is going. The everybody is two people. So God said, Isaac, stay here. Just stay. There seems to be no promise. It's dry. How will I eat? But Isaac had been processed. Or Isaac had been processed. To know that if God speaks. Then it is true. He means what he says. He watches over his word. To accomplish it. 
Heaven and earth readily pass away. God's integrity means so much to him. So Isaac stayed in Gera. Verse 6 says. He was there with his wife. Had introduced her as his sister. You know, the beady eyed people who had operated in his father's time were still there. Long and short is that one day he was sporting with his wife. You don't sport with your sister. And Abimelech noticed and called him and said, <laughs> we would have moved on how. It's just that God told us that we are all going to be dead people. And Isaac and his wife stayed in Gera. Nothing looked like it was changing. Nothing was changing. But he had built something in him that mattered a lot to where God was going to take him to. So after some months, he decided, let me sow in this ground. How stupid. How foolish. Nonsensical. Uncommon sense. If you sow seed in dry ground, where is the water going to come from? Is it your saliva? If you use saliva, after some time you'll be dehydrated. The famine itself is making you emaciated. Then you are adding dehydration. He sowed in that land. And the Bible says the very same year. Like God was waiting for him to do something. Like God is waiting for you to do something. And you to do something. And you to do something. Because after you have built maturity, maturity must manifest through the momentum that you have built to go all the line, all the yards, the nine whole yards. And the joy, TCC, is that after he had sowed, he reaped. And he reaped a hundredfold. A hundredfold is the best possible yield. It's the best possible outcome you can get. It's like taking an examination and you come out 100%. It can be better than that. In the dry place, the seeming dry place, that means, ladies and gentlemen, there are many things on this earth which make sense to us, but they have no spirit. And there are many things which are spirit and they will make no sense. But I assure you by the spirit of the living God, take that which makes spirit and it will drop what makes sense. And sense will come to spirit and God will be glorified. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Take spirit, take spirit, take spirit, take spirit. He sowed. And he got a hundredfold. Forget about the dynamics of how the vegetable or the fruit or the legume or whatever grew. It came out 100%. 100-fold. And then the next line says, and God blessed him. Doesn't that sound like the wrong way? It should be, and God blessed him, then he made a hundredfold. Momentum levels. After you would have said that TCC and Pastor Ketch, Pastor Ketch and TCC, look at this thing. Look at the bosses out there. Those of you on live stream, you can't see, but trust me, I speak the truth. There are bosses all over this place. Thousands seated here. This is success by any means. Listen to the choir. Listen to Tola. Listen to the music. Listen to Peter Linus. Listen to the energy, the unction, spirit life. If we stop here, it's fine. The only problem is that the Vanuatu Islands are there. The Shetlands Islands are there. Guernsey is there. Taiwan needs help. That is why all this is being packaged for you. This is an apostolic hub. This is an apostolic house. This is where you come and change flights and get ready and you'll be pushed 
to the DRC, to Gabon, to Belize, to Paraguay, to the islands of the sea. Because you've built maturity and you've built momentum. And the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed him. The Lord empowered him to prosper. Why? Because God trusted his maturity. God trusted his moment. It is Pastor Charles Somoforma that used to say, it is a tragedy if you take a million naira when you should have had a million dollars. Not all million is million. Not all trillions are trillions. Look at what's happening here. When God blessed him, the man now began. It's as if this thing was the test, was the trial. He now began the real manifestation of prosperity. Pastor Shola, do you understand this? The man had a hundredfold. A hundredfold means everything is okay. Then God blessed him. Then he now began. Doesn't begin mean start? He now began. I come to announce to you TCC in the beginning of this 30th year in a few months you will begin into a new realm of prosperity that you ain't seen before in the name of Jesus. And I quickly come to announce to you let not your heart be troubled because there is another level after what you have seen. You will continue prospering in the name of Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, you get to a point where the momentum force in your life will increase until you become very prosperous. Can you receive it? Can you receive it? I said, can you receive it? Can you receive it? Beginning may be wealth. Continuing may be wealth. But when you finish this abundance, because wealth is quantifiable, you say Bill Gates has 55.2, so you can count it till 55.2. Abundance is countless. It is what Pastor Charles and Pastor Ketch will say, Berekete, nyafu, nyafu, all over the place. God wants to take this church and manifest his abundance to you. If you can receive it, shout yes! Momentum is taking us somewhere. The man began to prosper. He continued prospering. He could not fail. He could not fall. The book of Hebrews says, listen, that no matter how God had prospered Abraham, he continued to live in twins with Isaac and Jacob. Two generations. He was a smart man. Not only was he looking for a builder who's a maker who's city of gold. No, no, no. It was also keeping his heart in the right place. You have lived it here. You have seen it here. Go and mandate it outside. Go and manifest it outside. He who takes a shortcut will be cut short. She who takes the shortcut will be cut short. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life.
Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 37 37 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at freshdewtv and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.